Okay, so this video is a little different than what I normally do. I've seen so many people out there with PCs that are not properly set up in an optimized way for gaming, yet they play games on it and don't care about all the FPS drops and all the issues that you get from not optimizing a Windows PC. So in this video, I'm going to show you everything I do and every setting I change when I install Windows. Now, the first half of this video is going to be settings that I change for a computer that I give to anyone. And the second part is going to be stuff that I do for a PC that I'm going to be personally using. So let's get straight into it. Now, the very first thing we're going to do is select the correct region. And some people just skip this and go, yes, it's I'm in the United States when no, no, you're not in the United States. Most people are. So let's go. Yes. US keyboard layout. That is completely normal. That is what you want because there isn't an Australian one or anything like that. So you just have to go. Yes. We're not going to add a second one. We never need to do that. Networking, we are going to skip because this is Windows 10 Home. Now, if you have Windows 10 Pro that you've just installed, then you can put in your internet cable or all that. But because this is Windows 10 Home, if I don't skip this, I will be forced to sign in with a Microsoft account, which is not something that I always want to do, especially for systems that are being used by other people. I don't want to have to ask for their account details. I just want to put in a blank user without a password and let them do that on their own. So just hit, I don't have internet. Continue with limited setup. License agreement. Sometimes I read this, but usually not. It doesn't seem to change much. So yeah, I have read the whole thing in its entirety several times. I'm just going to accept it. Type what you want to name your. Who's account. going to use this PC? I think this will be fine. A uh, password. I'm going to skip. But of course, if this is your computer, you probably want a really strong, secure password. Now, for these settings, it is very much personal preference. I like to have everything off except for location and find my my device and that is only because microsoft kind of nags you if you have find my device off or location off but i would prefer to have them off otherwise activity history i do not use this i always turn this off hey look cortana no i don't use cortana she gets more annoying than she's worth almost done now we just need to get a few more things polished up for you and windows will be all yours looking forward to helping out Okay, now we're at the desktop and immediately the first thing I can see that's bothering me is that the screen resolution is not set correctly. And this is probably because the display drivers are not yet installed because the PC is not connected to the internet. So now I'm going to connect it to the internet. So now I'm going to go to the settings menu. I'm going to go to the update and security section. And I'm going to look straight for activation. Windows 10 Home and Windows is activated with a digital license. Cool. So we don't have to deal with that right now. If this wasn't activated, I would put in the product key or I would uh, do the troubleshoot activation step. Now we're going to go over to Windows Update. Make sure all these updates are installed. Okay, so now that the PC has finished installing those updates, I'm going to do the same thing again. Settings, Windows Update, and just check if there's any more available. Because sometimes it forgets to install all of them. Or it has errors. And now those are done. So at this point, we have to use Microsoft Edge, which is still the old version. The new version will be included in future versions of Windows. But here we use Microsoft Edge and we're going to go download Chrome. All right, here's Chrome. I'm going to go get started. I'm going to set it as the default browser. Let's just pick one of these random themes. I don't usually care. Set as default. Right there. View Chrome. Close out of settings. Uh, I would sign in, but this is not going to be used by me, so I'm going to skip that. Let's close out of it. Okay, so at this point, I would download all these software and drivers for the components inside the computer. So the NVIDIA graphics driver, for example, and then the AMD chipset drivers, AMD software, SSD drivers, SSD software as well. I don't normally do stuff for RGB just because it slows down the system so I kind of just leave it set it once and then wipe the system and yeah uninstall the software 
there's not much that system builders usually do after this point. That's where I'm different. So we're going to close out of Chrome right now, just because we don't need it yet. And I'm going to fix the time because the time zone is incorrect. So I'm just going to type in the search bar time and that should come up with change the date and time. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to set the time zone automatically and that should be correct. 4.26 p.m. is correct. So let's leave that. Now I'm going to make sure that after the drivers have been installed, the power options have been changed properly. Now, if you have an AMD CPU, this should be set to AMD Ryzen balanced. But because this is not a AMD machine, it's not on the correct power plan. Normally, there should be an option right here for high performance. And that's what I would choose if I didn't have an AMD CPU. But on this computer, you actually have to go into Windows Mobility Center and change it from down here. Let's close out of that. Now I'm going to deal with some of the bloatware that Windows 10 Home pre-installs onto devices. So first of all, I'm going to get rid of all the pre-installed Windows Store games and apps that nobody uses. I don't want Solitaire. I don't want Mixed Reality. I don't need OneNote. And I don't need Paint 3D either. Everything else seems pretty good. Yep, there's nothing major here that slows down. I am now going to right click on the start button, run a PowerShell as admin, and I'm going to paste in this command right here. And I'll make sure to leave this in the description, but all this does is uninstall Cortana because we're not gonna be using it. We don't need it installed, slowing down the computer. So now if we have a look here, Cortana should not do anything. So obviously it's gonna help to just have the search icon here and we can turn off the Cortana button as well. Clean that up a bit. We only need Windows search, nothing else there. Now I'm going to paste in another command and what this will do is uninstall the Windows Game Bar. So if we type in Game Bar now, there should be nothing apart from the Game Bar settings. So after that, I'm going to go and disable the Game Bar from the settings as well, even though it doesn't actually do anything because the Game Bar has been uninstalled. I'm going to turn off the Windows Captures right here, which this, which this PC does not support, so I'm just going to leave it. Then I'm going to enable game mode because this actually does help now. It never used to, but at the moment, game mode is very well optimized for streaming and will make OBS and stuff like that perform better. So I'm going to leave that on. And Xbox networking, I generally leave this alone because there's nothing you can really do to fix stuff if this is broken. I forgot to uninstall Windows Mail as well. That is something that I do not like having installed. It is a horrible mail client. I used it for a year and it just caused me tons of problems. So we don't need that installed. After that, I'm going to open up Chrome and I'm going to go to the Chrome Web Store and grab a bunch of extensions. The only one that I suggest all of you grab is uBlock Origin. The rest are kind of personal preference, but I like to have a bunch of extensions installed with Chrome. So let's get uBlock Origin. And this will just block ads for YouTube, websites, news articles, all of that stuff because I hate seeing them and I hate watching them on YouTube. All the time. Okay, so uBlock Origin is installed. That's working fine. Now on the screen right now, there'll be a list of extensions that I also like to use, but I'm setting this computer up as if it wasn't going to be used by me. So I'm going to leave those alone for now. I'm going to remove the Microsoft Edge icon from the desktop. We don't want people getting confused with that. We can also remove it from here as well. That's a personal preference, of course. I'm going to open up the Microsoft Store now and Inside the Microsoft Store, I'm going to search for a app called Ear Trumpet. So if we type in here, Ear Trumpet, should come straight up. Get that. And you don't have to sign in to install apps from the Microsoft Store, but I do believe you do have to for games. So that's downloading now. All right, if we go ahead and launch that, close out of the store, and if we have a look in the taskbar right now. It's probably going to be a bit filled up. Yep, here we go. So there's going to be two volume icons. So if we right click on the taskbar and we scroll down to turn system icons on or off, we can turn off the default volume icon and we can close out of this message. And right here is the ear trumpet icon. Now, if you don't know what ear trumpet does, here's a quick demo. You can actually control the volume of different applications no matter where they're outputting to, you can see there's different devices here. You can view them all or hide them all. And you can set Chrome, for example, to go to a different device if you prefer. This is much better than the default volume slider. I just noticed that there is actually a folder here that I forgot to remove. 
we can delete all of these pins because these are just the online versions of uh, Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. And if you already own the desktop full versions of those apps, you'd probably want to use those instead. And looks like this the start menu is glitched out a bit there. But yeah, we can also uninstall 3D Viewer, Films and TV, Feedback Hub, OneDrive, Tips, and of course, Skype. Now I'm going to make sure that my monitor is running at the correct refresh rate. Let's go to Settings, Display, select the monitor right here. And we go to Advanced Display Settings, Display Adapter Properties, List All Modes. It looks like it's 920 by 1080, 60 hertz. If we go down, normally you would see higher up refresh rates, so like 144 hertz, 75 hertz, stuff like that. You want to set it to the highest one you can get, so 1920 by 1080, 32-bit, but the highest hertz if you can without being interlaced. That is the best refresh rate that your monitor can do. So hit OK, be done with that. So now I'm going to go into the privacy settings right here. I'm going to go down to speech, that's all good. I'm going to turn off getting to know you. I like to turn off contacts. I don't like people being able to find out who I know. In background apps, I always turn off photos because photos actually really hogs up your system. I have seen photos use 100% of a CPU without even being open. It, it just does random scans and stuff whenever it feels like it and really affects your performance. So don't let photos run in the background. You never need it to. In devices, I always turn off Bluetooth because I never use it unless I want to receive a file from my phone or something. I would also turn off Wi-Fi, but this PC doesn't have Ethernet available to it right now. In the system section, I always turn off clipboard history just because I don't use it. But some people do find this really useful, so you might want to leave that on. That is up to you. In About, I always change the PC name to something that is easy to understand. So like Jake PC or something like that. Now I'm going to open up the control panel. So view by large icons. Go down to System. Go to Change Settings. Over here. Go to Advanced, go to Settings for Startup and Recovery. Turn off Automatically Restart on System Failure. That means that you'll see what the error message is when your computer blue screens, if it does. If you leave this on, then your computer will just restart automatically and you won't know what the problem was when your computer has a problem. So hit OK. Now, if you're super into like the maximum performance you can get, you can also go into here and turn off all of these settings this kind of makes windows look a bit more ugly you know the animations aren't there and i like to leave some of them on so i just have all of them on because it's a gaming pc it can handle it and i don't normally deal with the taskbar when i'm in a game that much and i go to system protection and i go configure system restore so configure turn it on max usage uh let's just leave it at 30 gigabytes i think that's a fair amount Hit OK, then I create a restore point when everything works. So that if I ever have a problem, I can go back to this restore point and undo all the changes since this restore point was made. While I'm here, I'll have a quick look in Device Manager to make sure everything is good in here. Yep, looks all good. If there's a check mark, if there's an exclamation mark somewhere and a device is sticking out, like for example, a monitor, and it's saying device unknown or something like that, then I have to go and figure out where the driver is for that and install that. But this looks like it's all right. Now I'm going to right click the start button, open task manager. Let's make this a little bigger. Just have a quick check what is using our CPU right now. It's just task manager, which is good. Nothing else is really stressing it out. Okay, so at this point I'm gonna benchmark the system. So let's open up the Microsoft Store and download a benchmark program I like to use called Cinebench. Go ahead and install that, accept the license, and I'm just gonna see how well the CPU performs in this machine. There we go, we got 220 points in Cinebench, which is fine for this machine, but it's not a particularly great score. Normally you want above a thousand on a modern computer. But yeah, this is like eight years old, so nothing major to expect right here. 
That is fine. That means my hardware is performing well. I'm going to save that result for later. And in the future, if I have to reinstall Windows again, I'll know what results to expect. So now for this half of the video, I'm going to be doing some more personal tweaks that I would make to a computer that I would use rather than tweaks that I would make to a computer that I would give to someone else. So the very first thing I do before I get into changing settings is I start downloading some software so that can be doing that in the background while I'm doing the rest of the tweaks that I like to make. So I go to ninite.com for this, which is a basically a website that groups together a package of all this software. So you only have to do one download for stuff. So I would do 7-zip, I do Discord, uh, I don't need any of that stuff. Uh, I like to have Steam, uh, VLC for video playback, Audacity for recording and editing audio. Uh, I do Spotify for music, Handbrake for YouTube stuff, but you probably don't need Handbrake. Uh, I don't do any of those. I normally don't need them. Uh, I don't do most of these, to be honest. I do use Sumatra PDF because it's a good PDF reader. Uh, you don't need any more security. You've already got the built-in one. And other than that, that's all you really need. There are some other programs I like to use as well. Stuff like Image Glass for viewing pictures. And then I also like to use WizTree for viewing what's using my storage drive so I can clean them up. This is a really good program for that. And yeah, let's open up the Ninite executable and that will start downloading all these programs automatically for me without me having to do each one on its own. So now let's get to all the things that have been bothering me since this computer has been on. One of the biggest things I'd like to do is turn dark mode on. This looks significantly better than all the white window bars, stuff like that. This just looks horrible. Then you turn dark mode on, this actually looks kind of usable, you know? Way, way better. Now I'm going to make three changes to Windows Explorer. Let's full screen this. I'm going to click this arrow here so this stays open. I'm going to go to the view section, turn off hit, turn on, sorry, hidden items. File name extensions, then go to Options, open Windows Explorer to this PC so that when I click on File Explorer, I go to the this PC folder instead of the Quick Access folder, which I don't like using. I also like to give my hard drive a name. For this, I just call it uh, Windows SSD because it's an SSD. If I had other drives in here, I would call them Game Drive or whatever. Whatever makes sense for it. I'm going to go ahead and find a decent wallpaper because this one here is horrible. I preferred the old Windows wallpaper over this thing. This is just, just CGI, nothing special. I, I really like this one, so let's stick with this one as a wallpaper. So open the image in new tab, save the image in full quality. Let's just put it in, let's put it on the desktop, save that, and exit one that's downloaded, which it has. So open that. Set as desktop background. There we go. And I don't like that the taskbar is not transparent basically at all. So I'm going to download another program called Translucent Taskbar. And that will make the taskbar look way better. Let's have a look here. Translucent. Oh, there it is. Spelled it wrong. Translucent TB, it's called. Okay, launch that. Translucent TB, agreed to the license. Taskbar looks way better already. And of course you can customize this to open at startup, use different settings. And I like to have it on blur rather than completely clear, which it only really makes a difference if your background is different at the bottom compared to above this area. But I still prefer it that way. I'm going to clean up this start menu a bit. I actually don't want any of this stuff pinned. I'm not going to use it. I'll probably only leave the Microsoft store there and add my own stuff later on. I'm going to throw Translucent TB into the little extra area up here. Normally I would go into taskbar settings and just have all the icons turned on like this. If it was my personal PC, but it looks kind of ugly and sometimes on a smaller display, you can run out of room for applications. So I'm going to leave it in the default way like that. Now I'm going to connect my server to this computer so that I can install my scripts, which Disable a bunch of the built-in Windows things that just seem to bother me. So I'm going to go ahead and map this drive right here. Okay, so that connected fine. I'm going to copy my tweakers folder in here, which I have to do to run these files. And let me know if anyone wants some of these. You can find them online. I'll, I'll provide links to them if you need them. 
but I imagine these won't be too popular. These are just personal things. I like to disable the Windows lock screen timeout. Well, what this does is it stops the screen from turning off when the computer is locked. I like to know that the computer is on and not have the screen go blank all the time. So you just do that and then you go into power options and you can edit the plan settings, advanced power settings. And if we go down and for plugged in, I like to have this to like as long as I can before the screen just turns off. So let's save that. Next thing I do is disable Windows Defender. Now I'm going to extract these files for the web search overwrite. And if we run this, this will disable the C web results thing for when you misspell something in the search bar. I hate accidentally pressing enter and being sent to Microsoft Edge only to see a picture of a program that I was looking for rather than the actual program. So I just turn that off. And there we go, that's disabled. Okay, so I can get rid of this tweakers folder now and move on to the next step. I also like to put Chrome in the taskbar. I prefer to have it as number three, but I don't have anything to put in between it right now. I'm going to download a tool called HW Info, and this will help me check the temperatures. So hit free download. I'm gonna get the installer, I prefer the full version. Okay. So we're going to do sensors only, run that. So CPU temp, that looks fine. It's not too high. It's about what you'd expect for a laptop. Uh, GPU, it's the same thing because it's a integrated graphics. So yeah, I don't see anything bad in here. That all looks good. I can close out of this. Okay, now I'm going to give the computer a quick restart and Discord and Steam have started up. I'm actually going to disable both of those because I'm only going to be clicking on them when I need them. I don't want them to be in my face every single time I launch the computer. Where is Steam? There. Okay, turn off Steam and let's turn off the Windows Defender notification. And finally, after I've installed everything, I want to take it all off the desktop. Sometimes I leave Chrome here. It depends if it's for me or for someone else, but sometimes I leave it there. If it was my computer, I would put it on a different screen. But if I only had one screen, I would put it in the recycle bin and just launch Chrome from down here. Better to have a clean desktop than a messy one all the time. So at this point, I would consider this computer to be pretty usable. There are a lot of other things that I would do that I just can't think of right now. That would obviously bug me as I use the computer more and more. But for now, most people would be happy with using something like this. And if we have a look in the task manager, we should see that barely any of the CPU is actually being used by background applications, except for Discord. Discord likes to use stuff just because, yeah, there's nothing Windows based that is using up any of the resources in the machine, which is perfect. All of that is going straight to your games. So at this point, I would normally start installing all of my games, signing into all my apps, and installing all my programs that I normally use, aside from the, like, essential ones that I've already done. So yeah, please like and subscribe, maybe join my Discord, or use my Epic Games credit code. And yeah, I guess I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.